What's up guys and welcome back to the Texas Fishing Force. I'm Mike and today I want to talk to you about side casting redfish. My absolute favorite way to catch uh, fish in general, catching redfish. Uh, I've done a lot of videos about it. I've talked about it in the past. Now, I have been very fortunate over the last few years that I've been able to go out with um, guys that know a lot more about that than I do. Some of the best side casting red fishermen really on the Texas coast. And I've gained a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge from those guys. Now, on top of that, um, I have taken quite a few people out recently, you know, some of them for their very first trip sight casting redfish. Um, and I, you know, I was sharing some of that knowledge with those guys and, and it made me realize that there's a lot that uh, people don't know, um, you know, that, that people don't think about when they're trying to go out and learn how to sight cast redfish. So I want to share some of the knowledge uh, that I shared with those guys and I want to share it all with you. So today, we're gonna go over five tips for sight casting redfish. All right, uh, five tips for sight casting redfish. Let's dive in. All right, number one is get elevated, get as high up as you possibly can. Now I was told uh, a while back that for every foot above the uh, water that you are, you can see an extra 12 feet in distance. Now I don't know how accurate that is, but I know for a fact that the higher you get, the more you can see. There are many, many times I've been up on the tower and whoever's fishing with me has been down on the deck and I've been calling out fish and they literally, they can't see it even when it's only a few feet away from them because the lower you are, uh, you just can't see into the water like you can when you're up higher. Yeah, you can see his, now you can see his mud. I can't see it. Really? It's like right next to you. This? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, I kind of want to get up there now. Beyond that, when you're in choppy water and you have a lot of waves and, and splashing going on, you can't tell the difference uh, at a distance um, what is a fish splashing or if it's just a wave you also can't see um, the wakes from redfish as easy you can't see bait that's being pushed up a, a, as easy um, and, and the big one is the higher you get up you can see a lot of those mud boils when the fish take off and they make these little mud boils and swirls the higher you are the easier it is to see all of that stuff so getting elevated really really does help um the higher you are the better now does that mean that you need to go out and and buy a tower boat and get up no it doesn't uh does it help absolutely there are huge benefits to it which is why a lot of your sight casting guys um buy tower boats you buy um you know boats that have elevated platforms like i have i have a, a mid tower on mine and i uh, i love it um but do you need it no not necessarily um, there's a lot of things that you can do to get uh, elevated on your boat, regardless of what kind of boat you have. I used to put a cooler at the front of my um, my boat on the deck, and I would just stand on that. It would get me, you know, two feet above where I was before, and you can see a lot more. Um, I have um, I have climbed up on my console or up on my seat and been casting from there. I still do that. Now I do have a mid tower, which you know brings my console up about two feet, and then if I get on top of that. Um, I'm really six feet above the water level, so I can see a lot from that. My tournament partner has a, a tower on the front of his boat. We get on that. Um, you can just see a lot more. So uh, use what you have, you know, stand on your cooler, stand on your seat, stand on your deck. Yeah, so number one, get elevated. All right, number two is uh, be observant. Uh, once you're up on that tower and you're, you're ready to fish, take a minute, look around, see what's going on. Um, every time I go to a spot and you know we're, we're about ready to fish, I'll grab my rod, I'll go and I'll jump up on the tower or jump up on my console, whatever it may be, get as high as I possibly can. And before I make any casts, I, I literally, I just look around. I look uh, around and see what's going on. Um, there's a lot that you'll, you may miss if you're on the deck. And once you get up on the tower, you, you can see things that you, um, you didn't see before. So... I look around, see if I see any splashes or any bait moving or any birds that are off in the distance, any wakes, any of that stuff. Um, I just I just try to figure out what's going on so that I can make a game plan from there and kind of move into those positions where I need to be. Um, you know, just take a take a few minutes. Now, there's nothing wrong getting up there and just start casting. And sometimes you you know you're in the fish and uh, that that's great. 
Uh, but a lot of times you're going to waste time unless you figure out where you need to be, where you need to go. Maybe you see um, some wakes off in the distance or coming out of a channel or a drain or something like that. You know that you need to get over there. Or maybe you see some blow ups or some um, bait moving uh, across the shoreline. Um, well, you, you have an idea of where you need to go. And so just take a minute, uh, look around. Uh, I'm not going to go into all of the, you know, all of the details on all the things that you need to be looking for. I've done a ton of videos on that, but you know, obviously the main ones are um, any movement in the water, bait, birds, splashes, shaky water, um, all of that stuff. Just look around, figure out what you need to do next. All right, number three is be stealthy and be patient. Uh, the last thing that you want to do is after you locate some fish is to run over there and spook, uh, spook these redfish. Redfish are very, very easy to spook. They are very sensitive to vibrations. In fact, you know, sometimes even um, certain lures can, uh, can spook them. Um, it, it doesn't take much at all. Two, one. Oh, dude, this is about to be Rolling chaos. slow. Look at this right below us. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> and he missed it. So that tells you how sensitive these fishes are just my look there's that school still in front of you though just my lure making that extra the entire, school. That entire school so you've gotten elevated you've located some fish or you've located you know some signs of life maybe it's some birds working maybe it's some bait running down or, or maybe you've uh, located an entire school of redfish that's running down a shoreline but they're you know a few hundred yards away well the last thing that you want to do is to uh, barrel over there and uh, spook these fish and, and completely ruin your chances to catch them. So you really, uh, really need to think about um, how to get over there quietly and, and, and be patient. You know, it, it's, it's really hard. That was the biggest mistake when I first started doing uh, sight casting for redfish. The biggest mistake I ever made was that I would get so excited. I would see these redfish, you know, maybe a few hundred yards away and I would either crank up my motor and I would run over there or I would turn my trolling motor all the way up because I was, I was so excited I needed to get to them like right now. And uh, you know, that, that's one of the worst things that you can do. Be patient, watch the fish, watch what they're doing um, and, and, and then figure out a game plan to get over there quietly. Uh, I'll tell you uh, when I am, uh, you know, searching areas or, you know, even if I've located fish, my trolling motor really doesn't go over about two, uh, not anymore. I used to, I mean, I'd crank it up and I'd be moving really, really quickly. And I don't now, I, um, you know, I, I stay as, very, uh, as quiet as I possibly can. And if, you know, if I come up onto a school of redfish, a lot of times I'll just turn the trolling motor off and then just drift there for a minute because I don't want to make any noise. I don't want any vibration in the water uh, because it's just too easy to spook these fish. Now, a huge part of being stealthy and being patient is planning your approach to these redfish. Uh, if you see a school of redfish, just sit and watch them for a minute. See exactly what they're doing. Sit, see which direction they're moving. A lot of times when they're on the shoreline, it's real easy to tell where they're going. If you can't see uh, the fish particularly, uh, and maybe you, you found um, some birds, watch where the birds are going. If they're moving left or right, um, and then plan how you're going to get in front of those fish. You always want to be in front of them. You don't want to be casting uh, from behind them. Uh, you know, it's just much harder to catch fish that way. So you want to plan uh, your approach where you can get um, into where these fish are uh, without spooking them. You can just drift out in front of them. Sometimes you need to take your trolling motor and maybe do a big circle so that you can get way in front of them and, and wait on them. And quite a few times that I've gone so far uh, in front of them that I'm waiting five, maybe even 10 minutes for these fish to finally make it down the shoreline and get uh, close enough to me where I can start making some casts. There they are, they're in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Here they come. <laughs> Keep coming. Keep coming. On top of that, you want to uh, uh, think about other things that could affect uh, spooking those fish, like shadows. A lot of people don't think about that. But when you're uh, up on the tower and the sun is behind you, you're casting a huge shadow on the water. And uh, shadows, um, they scare fish. They spook fish very, very easily. That's, you know, their, their biggest predators for a lot of fish is uh, birds. So any, um, any shadows, 
anything um, moving above them is going to, uh, it's gonna scare them. Now the biggest part of that is just uh, taking the time to, to think about what you need to do and planning exactly how you're going to uh, get in front of those fish. You don't ever want to be trailing fish because uh, you know a lot of times when you're trailing fish you may only get one or two casts before uh, they're either out of range or, or you end up scaring them. Um, so you want to be out in front but you also don't want to be directly in front of them because as they come towards you they're going to see the boat and that's going to scare them too. So you want to be out in front where you can make casts in front of them but not directly be in front of them. Uh, so you know you want to give yourself the, the most opportunity to make as many casts as possible in case you need them. All right, number four is spotting your redfish. Not always when you get into an area uh, where you know that redfish are, are you immediately going to be able to see them. So you need to be looking for signs uh, of where they are and where they're moving and all of that. Now, um, if you've gotten into an area, you know, if you've located some, uh, some signs that there are fish there, once you get into that area where you know that you need to be casting and, and really, um, you know, searching for those fish, there are a few things that you need to be looking for. Uh, one of those is mud boils. Redfish um, have a very specific uh, kind of mud boil. In fact, if you look at uh, some of the boils that other fish do, it, it you know if you've looked at them long enough, you can tell which ones are redfish and which ones are bait fish or which ones are flounder or all kinds of things. Um, I'm not going to go over the specifics in that, but that is something that you need to look for. Now, if you've already if you already know that redfish are in the area, well, it makes it a little bit easier. Another thing that you want to look for is wakes. Um, again, redfish make a very specific kind of wake. Unlike certain bait fish um, or other fish, you can you can tell just by the way the wake is and that kind of V shape that like comes off. And, uh, you can tell the difference between a redfish and some of the other fish just based on the wake. You also want to look for uh, moving bait. You want to look for um, flickering bait or bait that's jumping, bait that's running, not necessarily just like a mullet that's like kind of flopping around. That doesn't really mean a whole lot most of the time. But if you see groups of bait that are taking off all at once, chances are there's a redfish in the area and they're running. So those are all things that you want to look for, figure out. And then lastly, you want to locate redfish. Now, redfish uh, sometimes are a little bit hard to see. They're darker in the water, especially, you know, um, where we fish in some of these back lakes where it's all muddy anyway a lot of these redfish will literally sit in the mud and not move definitely uh, some experience uh, when it comes to spotting redfish sometimes they are very very difficult to see but uh, over time you know it, it almost becomes second nature how easy it is you know you, you see the movement you see the, the the shadows you see the mud boils you, you know and um, it gets a lot easier over time and you, you'll notice that you start, you know, picking it up really, really quick. Any motion or movement, you, you can tell the difference between bait and, and, and redfish. So uh, lastly, just look for redfish. Um, all right, and lastly, number five is how to cast to redfish. Uh, that seems pretty self-explanatory. You see the fish and you cast, but it's not. Uh, there's a lot of people that make mistakes when uh, casting to a, either a school of redfish or even an individual redfish. So we're gonna go over some of that now. So first, uh, you always want to be casting in front of the redfish, whether it be a single redfish or a, an entire school of redfish, cast way, way in front of them. Let them run into that lure. Uh, you don't want to be casting into the middle of the group. The moment that lure hits, all those fish are going to take off. It's going to scare them and they're all they're, That's it. They're going to be gone. So you want to be casting way in front of them um, where maybe they're not even hearing that lure. Um, you know, and if you cast too far, you know, where it takes you a little while, no problem. Let that lure sit there. Let it just sit there for a minute and let those fish catch up to it. And once they get, you know, uh, 12 inches or even two feet away, start to twitch it a little bit, get a little bit of movement, get some of that vibration in the water, and you'll see some of those front fish take off after it um, and, and smash that lure. If you don't, if you miss that cast, if you're behind them, if you're you know too far, um, e either behind in front, it, it's just not a great cast, uh, don't wait on it. Get that lure back in there and then make another cast. Try to make a better cast out in front of them. Same thing if you cast uh, and, and they're just not interested, they, they, they swim by it, don't sit there and slowly reel it in. Get that, get that lure back in and make another cast. Sometimes it'll take you four, five, six casts before the redfish are, are interested or maybe you just annoyed them enough where they finally strike it. I mean, there, there's been schools of redfish that I've cast that 10, 15 times before one of them finally hit it. So uh, take your time, be patient, um, but 
you know, you don't want to sit there and waste any time. So if they're not hitting it and they've passed that lure, go ahead and, you know, reel it back in as fast as you possibly can and get another cast out there. Now, if you're fishing uh, in a group or you've got more than one person on the boat with you um, and one person hooks up, don't uh, fight that fish. Don't, don't, don't sit there. All that noise and all that, you know, fighting and the fish thrashing around and splashing, it's going to scare all the rest of the fish. So a lot of times what we'll do, if one person hooks up, you just let that fish run. You know, you, you want to set that hook, get it on there good, uh, and then let the fish run. And a lot of times, you know, you, you can, whoever else is on the boat can get a few more casts into that school. And maybe you can, you know, double up or triple up depending on how many people you have. And you can, uh, you know, get a, you know, quite a few fish out of that one school if that's what you're looking to do. All right. Well, I hope these tips help you on your next uh, redfish sight casting adventure. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment below, and we'll see you next time.